On March 13, 2020, Brianna Taylor, a 26-year-old black female emergency medical technician, was fatally shot by the Louisville Metro Police Department. Months later, and only after the tragic death of George Floyd, Brianna Taylor became a rallying cry at anti-racism protests worldwide. Like many, I joined other protesters to peacefully advocate for an end to systemic racism and police brutality. Out of the eight protests I attended, some took place in front of government buildings, others took place in front of educational institutions. But most of the protests took place on the steps of public libraries. As a Master's of Education in School Librarianship student, I was far from surprised. Carl Rowan, an American journalist, wrote, The library is the temple of learning, and learning has liberated more people than all the wars in history. I am proud to work in a school library where educating myself and others on advocacy, inclusion, diversity, and growth is not just one possible way to do my job effectively. It is the only way. Libraries are brimming with diverse voices that cover the kaleidoscope of human experience. These voices are not only nestled between the covers of our books, but also within our students, our patrons, and ourselves. As librarians, we are champions of intellectual freedom. We provide free access to all expression of ideas, through which any and all side of a question, cause, or movement may be explored. A school library is a place where students have the right to be active participants in the curation of their own worldview. It is not a place where we tell them what to think or how to feel. Instead, it is our responsibility to provide them with access to a variety of human experiences. To be an advocate in a school library is not to try to blatantly change the minds of our students. It is to open minds. Paradoxically, an open mind, one that reads, experiences, thinks, and listens through the lens of understanding and compassion, cannot help but be changed. As Ralph Waldo Emerson put it, the mind, once stretched by a new idea, never regains its original dimensions. Learning about the struggles, triumphs, and perspectives of diverse people necessitates increases in compassion and understanding. In one of my favorite books, Ender's Game, the main character says, I think it's impossible to really understand somebody, what they want, what they believe, and not love them the way they love themselves. As school librarians, we not only provide access to diversity of thought and expression, but we also have the privilege of teaching it to our students. There is an old adage that goes, you can't understand someone until you've walked a mile in their shoes. In effect, this saying is a reminder to practice empathy. As librarians, we are the curators and custodians of libraries full of books, where all a patron need do is flip open the front cover of any of our books to glean another perspective, to stretch the mind. As school librarians, we have the privilege of working in a place where all are welcome. Not just all people, but all thoughts and all ideas as well. When there are restrictions and when we encounter censorship, it is our job to publicly speak out against it. It is our job to publicly and vocally challenge censorship and fight for inclusion. It is our job to be advocates. The ALA Library Bill of Rights states that libraries should provide materials and information presenting all points of view on current and historical issues. Sadly, many of our libraries fall short of this requirement. 
The fact is that there is a disproportionately small number of books in many libraries about minority characters. At the same time, our communities are made of increasingly diverse individuals that span all dimensions of diversity. Gender diversity, ethnic diversity, linguistic diversity, academic diversity and exceptionalities, experiential diversity, religious diversity, and diversity of thought. It is our job to advocate for diverse books. It is our job to make sure our students have access to these books. As school librarians, we cannot turn a blind eye to injustice under the assumption that it is not our jobs to address it, it is. We cannot pretend that the world's problems do not penetrate the walls of our libraries, they do. Susan Orlean, the author of the library book, wrote, Every problem that society has, the library has too, because the boundary between society and the library is porous. Nothing good is kept out of the library, and nothing bad. As champions of intellectual freedom and advocates for free speech, librarians do not shy away from confronting and including the problems of society. We welcome them with opened arms. We advocate to keep materials from being excluded from our collections because of the origin, age, background, or views of those contributing to their creation. The truth of the matter is that there is injustice in our libraries, in our schools, in our communities, and in our world. As librarians, specifically school librarians, we are privileged enough to be able to build safe havens for freedom and knowledge. School librarians have a platform for educating young minds, for stretching them to hear and read and understand new ideas. We can teach empathy and compassion through our collections, our lessons, and our actions. We have a platform to help shape the minds of future generations. This is a gift. Please, do not waste it. Our role as educators is to give students the tools and the ability to examine and understand the world so that they can then change it. We must diversify our collections and teach inclusion, compassion, and perspective taking teaching diversity, being an advocate, it is not a suggestion, but a necessity. In his essay, A Talk to Teachers, James Baldwin wrote, the paradox of education is precisely this, that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which he is being educated. Our education system exists to teach students about the world so they can go out and change it. Education as advocacy is a powerful and important catalyst for inspiring change. Society should be endlessly iterative. There is no reason we should be content with where we are. We should constantly be striving for improvement. Change is inevitable. As leaders in our schools, we must be advocates for everyone. The unheard, the downtrodden, the misunderstood. As school librarians, our primary patrons are the young, the vulnerable. And our libraries are spaces where all are welcome, where all must feel welcome, where we must publicly welcome everyone with our collections, with our lessons, with our words, and with our actions, we must make sure all our students know. You are welcome here. There is space for you on our shelves, in our classrooms, and in our hearts. And if someone tries to silence you, if someone tries to take your voice and your perspective off our shelves, if someone tries to make you feel unwelcome, we will be advocates for you. 
a 15-year-old girl, the same age as some of our students once wrote, how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Below our list of resources to help you improve the world. I implore you to read them, watch them, learn from them, and most of all, use them to educate and advocate for others.